Historians have read it. What's a devastating event that no one talks about? The Carrington Event In 1859, solar flares hit the Earth, causing an aurora borealis effect to be seen all over the world. It lasted for several days, during which time it was reportedly bright enough to read by at midnight. Telegraph operators reported receiving shocks and burns from the devices and in some cases removed the batteries powering the telegraphs as signals were being disrupted by the geomagnetic storm. After removing the batteries, the telegraphs still operated, in some cases better than they had when they were powered. It wasn't particularly devastating at the time, but it's estimated that if a similar storm would have hit us today, it would cripple the entire planet for potentially decades. The estimated repair cost in the US alone is measured in the trillions. In 2012, a similar storm missed the Earth by nine days. The Yandajan Massacre of 2005 in Uzbekistan It is the largest mass shooting in Asia since Tiananmen Square, with over 1,000 killed and even more wounded. The Uzbek government forcefully silenced reform protests by firing into the crowd and then kicked out 90% of Westerners in the country when the US government and UN tried to investigate. Terrible loss of life that rarely gets remembered because the Uzbek government tried so hard to cover it up. Something that is well known, but not that much, is the Goiânia accident in Brazil, where Kesium-137 was handled by many people, including children. It is regarded as the worst radioactive incident to happen in Brazil. It was a radioactive contamination accident that happened on September 13, 1987, after a radiotherapy machine from an abandoned hospital was illegally stripped for parts and said parts were stolen on September 16th. One of the thieves opened the cesium capsule and then on September 18th sold it to a scrapyard. At that same night, the owner of the scrapyard saw a blue glow in the machine's parts, which was the cesium capsule that had been opened. Thinking it might be valuable, he brought it to his home. Over the next three days, he invited friends and family to see the strange glowing substance. On September 21st, one of his friends succeeded in freeing several rice-sized grains of the glowing material from the opened capsule. He then started sharing some of them with friends and family. On September 25th, the capsule was again sold to another scrapyard, although one day before the sale, more dust was removed from the capsule by the scrapyard owner's brother. The brother then took the dust home and spread it on the floor, where later his daughter would play with the dust. She also ate while on the floor, and dust fell on her food. One of the family members of the owner of the first scrapyard noticed that many people around her fell ill, and on September 28th, she reclaimed the capsule from the second scrapyard and brought it to a hospital. In the morning of September 29th, it was confirmed that the material was radioactive and the doctors persuaded authorities to take immediate action on this matter. The city, state, and national governments were all aware of the incident by the end of the day. News of the radiation incident was broadcast on local, national, and international media. Within days, nearly 130,000 people went to local hospitals concerned that they might have been exposed. Of those, only 250 were indeed contaminated, some with radioactive residue still on their skin. Four of those people died, including a six-year-old girl, the one that ate the dust. The Johnstown Flood of 1889, the deadliest civil engineering disaster on U.S. soil. It killed 2,209 people. After a dam collapsed, it swept up rail cars, passengers, trees, an entire town of 10,000, then swirled it around and ejected the debris downriver into a bridge where it all caught fire. Destruction beyond belief. And also that some rich steel magnates up the mountain didn't maintain the dam they used to keep their fishing reservoir. I'm not really a proper historian, but I feel the need to mention the Bronze Age collapse. It's not as though nobody talks about it at all, but considering how catastrophic it was, it doesn't get nearly enough attention. At this time, civilizations were still pretty scarce, but the Eastern Mediterranean was full of them. We can't pinpoint an exact reason, but at some point, it all fell apart. The Mycenaeans? Gone. The Hittites? Gone. The Minoans? Gone. The Egyptians? Barely clinging on and having serious problems. There are many things that happened around that time in that general area that could be the culprit. Volcanoes, earthquakes, drought, famine, war and invasions from foreigners that came by boat that historians have named the Sea People because we have basically no idea where they came from. In reality, it was probably a combination of some or even all of them. Again, I'm not a proper historian by any means, but this is what I heard. Actual historians, feel free to correct any mistakes or mention something I missed. 
I'm always amazed that people know so little about Pol Pot and Cambodia. His regime killed 25% of its population. Let that sink in. One in four. If you were educated, you were killed first. Taiping Heavenly Kingdom of Hongzhu Wan. Put simply, it was a usurped kingdom in the 1850s China that directly and indirectly led to the deaths of millions, maybe 10 million plus, of people through massacre and famine. Hong Zhu Quan believed he was the younger brother of Jesus Christ and persuaded enough people to follow along and start a civil war. Check out God's Chinese Son by Jonathan Spence. This is fairly recent, started in 1998 and ended in 2003, but the Second Congo War, it's the deadliest conflict since World War II, with about 5.4 million deaths, a vast majority of them due to malnutrition and disease. Baghdad used to be one of the biggest and most vibrant cities in the world in the 1200s until the Mongols came. Baghdad did not recover its year 1200 population until the 1980s. During World War II, the Japanese had invaded the Alaskan island of Attu. On the island was the village of Attu where the Aloitian tribe had lived for centuries. The only non-natives were the wife's school teacher and the priest's husband who were elderly and beloved by the townspeople. They were both shot by the Japanese. After that, the Japanese loaded the native population onto ships back to Japan where they worked in POW camps where many died from disease and execution. The Japanese saw them as lower than soldier POWs and almost subhuman because they didn't fight back and thus treated them horribly. When the war ended, only a handful of the native population survived and they went back home only to find their village burned down. They left the island and it now remains uninhabited basically, driving the Atu tribe to extinction. Years later, the Japanese left a peace monument on the island in honor of the American and Japanese soldiers that died there but have yet to apologize to the descendants of the Atu tribe they destroyed. The year 536 marked the beginning of a very bad time period. Basically, several natural disasters and social upheaval obso fucking lootly devastated multiple societies. It's thought that a volcanic eruption blocked out enough sun to cause crop failures across Europe and as far as China. While this was happening, terrible plagues were also afflicting the Middle East. Economies everywhere fell to ruin and stagnation in the years that followed because several other eruptions later made things worse. One thing that doesn't get talked about was more of a phenomenon or major problem than event, and that was how many people died in theater fires due to poor design, combustible materials, few fire exits, and panic. One of the worst was the Iroquois Theater in Chicago, 1903 which is both the deadliest theater fire and the deadliest single building fire in U.S. history, where patrons died after sparks from an arc light set a curtain on fire. Then a chain reaction started, exasperated by failures of the things in place that were supposed to combat fire. The theater had been overbooked to compensate for earlier poor sales, causing some to sit, blocking the exits. The fire was immediately worsened when performers opened the stage door to get outside, as it turned the fire into a fireball. Many people were held inside by iron gates that had been put in place to prevent people from sneaking in without paying. As people fled, they tumbled downstairs, trampled each other, and got squashed to death. Their unfamiliarity with the building got them stuck in dead ends and up against windows. Many jumped from fire escapes and died, while those behind them were saved. The bodies of the earlier jumpers cushioned their falls. All in all, 602 people died. Many were children. The story is a lot more complicated and sordid with city corruption, etc. The one takeaway is the incident promoted the development and use of the panic bar. I was fascinated with the story of the Osage Indians in the United States. The book Killers of the Flower Moon is an excellent book detailing what happened. Basically, they got sent to Oklahoma and found huge oil reserves on their land. They were rich and hired white people as servants which didn't go over well. People tried to marry in to get part of the riches. There were tons of murders and investigation led to the creation of the FBI in the United States. Galveston, Texas was once considered to be one of the most important commercial ports in the United States and was referred to by several fantastical names such as the Queen City of the Gulf and the Wall Street of the West. All that changed when it suffered a near direct hit from a devastating Category 4 hurricane in 1900 the deadliest natural disaster in American history. 
pretty much the entire city was destroyed by a storm surge and anywhere from 8 to 12,000 people died. Galveston was rebuilt, but it never truly regained its status. Houston became the state's commercial center in the storm's wake in addition to other factors. The Bronze Age Collapse Arguably more devastating than the fall of the West Roman Empire, so much knowledge lost, truly one of history's great mysteries. I recommend reading up on it, it's really interesting. We talk a lot about Columbine and Sandy Hook, but few people nowadays remember the 1927 bombing of the school in Bath, Michigan, or the explosion of a school in New London, Texas in 1937, that in addition to killing almost 300 people, launched the career of a cub reporter named Walter Cronkite. The Bath Massacre was mostly done with dynamite, wired into the school by a disgruntled janitor who also killed his wife and some of his livestock, and the New London disaster is why natural gas, which is odorless, has an unpleasant smelling gas added to it. Some people who went to parts of the school in the days preceding the blast complained of headaches and dizziness, but nobody could figure out why. In 535, humans went through hell. Many reported a strange color in the skies, not just in Europe, a dense, dry fog was also reported in Asia and the Middle East. Even the regions now known as the Americas weren't spared, e.g. droughts in Peru. Temperatures were rather low in some places, it snowed either in the summertime. One survivor, a Roman politician named Cassiodorus, explained about the bluish sun and no shadow being cast even in the moon. It had been hypothesized that Iceland holds the reason for the events between the year 535 and 536. Iceland is known for its volcanoes, and it was possible one such was to blame. The Kodinka Tragedy was supposed to be a celebration of the crowning of Nicholas II as emperor. Around 500,000 people gathered in a field where they would receive free food. Rumor spread that there wouldn't be enough food for everyone, leading to a panic and everyone rushing the field. 1,389 people were trampled to death. Nicholas II responded by going to a party that night. Also not a historian, but learning about the Beslan school siege in Russia was heartbreaking. As kids were settling down for the first day of the class, the school was attacked by Chechen terrorists. I think over 300 people, half of whom were kids, died over the course of three days. The Milan Conference Back in 1880, a bunch of educators of the deaf all decided to meet in Milan to determine how best to teach deaf people. 164 delegates were in attendance, only one of whom was deaf. At the time, there was a conflict among educators of deaf people about whether an oralism or manualism-based approach was better. Proponents of oralism argued that deaf people would never succeed in society if they could not speak and hold a conversation in the same way a hearing person would. To this end, anyone who attempted to sign would be punished, and deaf people were forced to lip-read. At the end of the conference, sign language was banned in all educational institutions, and deaf people were not allowed to teach for fear that it would encourage the use of sign language. As a result, for roughly 100 years, deaf people were essentially isolated from communication and unable to form communities. To this day, among older generations of deaf people, many still have never learned to sign. In addition, Deaf culture as a whole was and is profoundly affected by this event because it essentially stole stories that had been passed down from generation to generation, erasing the history of deaf people and the deaf community. Asked my history studying friend about this, she said there's a lot of events that people don't talk about. For example, there was a lot of countries involved in the Balkan conflict who knew about the massacre in Srebrenica but still allowed it to happen. So many historical events are just so grim and depressing when you read about it. We knew bad things were happening, but didn't stop until it was too late for many people. <laughs>